The veil began with a ship carrying dozens of South Koreans who were going to be sold in human trafficking for the purpose of the removal of organs and body parts. One of the criminals went to the room where the victims were being held captive. He looked at the victims and forced to take a young girl with him. But suddenly, a victim attacked him and all his fellow gangsters in that ship. Not long after that, South Korea Special Forces soldiers arrived and surrounded that ship. While they were searching that ship, they found the man who had attacked and killed all criminals in that ship. That man was called Han Ji Kyuk. He told his identity code to those Special Forces soldiers. In the National Intelligence Service Crime Information Center, an employee told his superior that Jia Hyuk's identity code couldn't be accessed. He asked the field agent chief, Hadong Kyun, to help him to access the code. After a while, they finally managed to access Ji Hyuk's identity code. From the information that they got from the code, it was revealed that Jae Hyuk was an NIS agent who was claimed to be dead. Dong Kyun was confused when he found out about that. He ordered his team to call his superior, Kang Pilho, right away. In a meeting, Pilho told his team about the information that he received from the NIS Crime Information Center. The director of the NIS, Bang Yong Chan, and some executives of the NIS attended that meeting. Pilho informed them that Jai Kyuk was the best field agent who was sent abroad to carry out a secret mission. Back then, two NIS agents were executed by a Libyan criminal organization. Jihak was sent to kill the leader of a criminal organization in a retaliation mission. He managed to carry out the mission well, and the international media were amazed by him. Meanwhile, Dom Kyun and his team stopped a police convoy to take Jihak back to the NIS headquarters. In the meeting, Pilho said that last year, Jihak and two other NIS agents were sent to China and North Korea to capture drug cartels. They managed to find and capture the networks, but at the end of the third mission, Jake Duck was reported missing. But not long time ago, South Korea Special Forces soldiers managed to find Ji Kyuk. Just like everyone, the NIS director Young Chan was surprised when he heard that. He said that Ji Kyuk had risen from the dead. Jung Young Ta, an NIS director, attended that meeting. Du Jin Suk, the NIS Overseas Division Deputy Director, who had responsibility to take care of her agent, and Lian Huan, the NIS Domestic Division Deputy Director, also attended that meeting. Before leaving the meeting, Young Chan told them to take care of this problem. Meanwhile, Jake Duck was undergoing medical examination at the medical center. The medical practitioners found many chemical substances in his blood. One of those chemical substances had affected his brain function by erasing his memory function. After they finished examining Jae Kyuk, they took him to the interrogation room and interrogated him with a lie detector test to verify his identity. But while Jae Kyuk was being interrogated, he began to feel annoyed because he knew that his superior was watching him from another room. He was angry because he knew that there was a traitor in the NIS that caused him to fall into the bottomless pit. He wondered if the NIS deputy director in Juan was involved in this. After the investigator finished interrogating Jae Hyuk, she informed Pil Ho that Jae Hyuk passed the lie detector test. One year ago, in Dandong, China, Jae Hyuk attacked and killed two members of a drug cartel in an elevator. Those gangsters had snake head tattoo on their hands. After Jae Hyuk killed them, he and his team destroyed the drug factory. After that, Jehak hanged out with Dong Wook and Kyung Siak, the members of NIS Foreign Intelligence Bureau. But suddenly, they heard someone approaching that place. Back to the present time, Jehak didn't remember any more about what happened after he heard someone approaching that place that time. He got up and tried to stab his neck with a pen, but Pil Ho stopped him right away. After that, Pil Ho met with Jin Suk. As Ji Hyuk's superior, who recruited Ji Hyuk, he was worried about him. Jin Suk asked Pil Ho to help Ji Hyuk to recover soon because she believed that Ji Hyuk had a list of NIS agents and executives who were suspected to be traitors and corrupt. In the evening, Ji Hyuk was taken to the interrogation room again. It appeared that his hair had been cut. In that room, a psychiatrist named Kim Yoo Jin showed Ji Hyuk a picture of his co-worker, Kyung Siuk lying dead on the floor. Jihyuk was haunted by his guilt after he saw that picture. But he still didn't remember about what happened. 
Despite that, the NIS decided to allow Jae Kuk to return to work. Psychiatrist Yoo Jin reported that Jae Kuk's blood still contained dangerous chemical substance. When Jae Kuk was in the elevator, he suspected that the man who was with him there was watching him. Once they got out of the elevator, he kept watching that man until he disappeared. In the bathroom, Jae Kuk stared at the wounds on his body. He tried to remember about what happened to him that those wounds could be there. After that, Jae Kuk went to his stadium. He saw his co-worker, CEO Su Yin, with a man there. Su Yin approached him and asked him for help. Jehuk noticed that Su Yin was wearing an engagement ring. Since he still couldn't remember about what happened, he suspected that Su Yin was one of people who had betrayed him. But when he saw the engagement ring that she was wearing, he remembered the ring that Kyung Siak was wearing that he saw in the picture. He assumed that Su Yin and Kyung Siak were engaged. He became more curious about people who had killed Kyung Siak. After that, Jae Hyuk began to train himself again. He was determined to find people who had betrayed him and killed his coworker Kyung Siak. Then while he was heading to the airport, he realized that some NIS agents were following him. But fortunately, he managed to get out of the taxi and went to the airport before those NIS agents realized it. At the airport, two security guards tried to stop Ji Hyuk, but Ji Hyuk managed to take care of them. After that, he went to the ship and saw Pil Ho waiting for him there. Pil Ho was his superior who had recruited him. He returned Ji Hyuk's gun to him. He said that that gun was found in the place where Ji Hyuk was reported missing. He also said that the NIS had allowed Ji Hyuk to return to work. After that, Ji Hyuk tested his shooting ability. When he was about to leave that place, he saw an agent training her shooting ability there. He thought that that woman's shooting ability was very poor. Then, Jae Hyuk met the field agent chief, Dong Kyun, and asked him about some information that he might find useful. From the way he asked him, it seemed that he also suspected them as one of people who had betrayed him. While Jae Hyuk and Dong Kyun were having a conversation, a new agent named Yoo Jae Yi suddenly came to that room. It was revealed that Ji Yi was going to become Ji Hyuk's partner. Ji Hyuk saw the shoes that Ji Yi was wearing and realized that she was the agent who trained her shooting ability earlier. Then, Dong Kyun took Ji Hyuk and Ji Yi to the NIS Crime Information Center. Turned out, some NIS agents didn't like that Ji Hyuk returned to work because they blamed him for the deaths of two other NIS agents. In the night in his apartment, Jae Hyuk saw someone sending him a Morse code light from another building. He cracked that code and found out that the message was about a locker in a minimarket. He then went to the minimarket, opened the locker, and found a flash drive inside. When he checked that flash drive, he found a video of him saying that there was a traitor in his organization, the NIS. The next day, a drug addict was found dead after a car crashed into him. Meanwhile, Jae Hyuk was thinking about what he said in the video. In order to find the traitor in the NIS, he needed to find the last piece of the puzzle. Su Yin, who was working as the head of Criminal Information Integration Center now, reminded Ji Hyuk about his warning. Then she met Yang Ta in his room. Yang Ta ordered her to investigate and watch Ji Hyuk. In his room, Jai Hyuk looked at the pictures of four people whom he suspected were the people who had betrayed him. He believed that one of those people had betrayed him. Those four people were Dong Kyun, Su Yin, Jin Suk, and Pal Ho. In another place, a Chinese gang called Huayan Gang and the vice leader of that gang, Guang Chiol, were seen hanging out together. Pil Ho received information that Huayan Gang was the Chinese gang that was targeted by Jae Kyuk last year. Meanwhile, Jae Kyuk was investigating a document about an NIS agent named Dong Huan who had passed away a long time ago. Two years ago, Jae Kuk met with Dong Huan. That time, Dong Huan was busy investigating Huayan Gang in China. He warned Jae Kuk that there was a bigger criminal organization that they needed to be aware of. Not long after Jae Kuk met him, Dong Huan and two other NIS agents were found dead. Because of that, Pil Ho sent Jae Kuk, Dong Wook, and Kyung Siak to investigate their death. With the help of an informant named Chun Gil, Jae Kyuk, and his team managed to get rid of some members of Huayan Gang. Not only getting targeted by the NIS, Huayan Gang was also targeted by the police. 
One afternoon, Wang Chiu was trying to run away from Jie Chuck's team and the police. After a while, the police finally managed to capture him. But not long after they arrested him, a mysterious man called the police station and asked them to release him soon. That man threatened that he would kill a police officer if they didn't release Wang Chiu soon. Meanwhile, Dong Qian asked Ji Chuck to meet Jin Suk with him. But in the elevator, before they went to Jin Suk's room, Dong Qian asked Ji Chuck not to obey any order that Jin Suk would give to him. In the meeting that was held in Jin Suk's room, Jin Suk and her team discussed about Wang Chiu. When Jai Haik saw Guang Chiu's picture, he said that he knew Guang Chiu and his history very well. Pil Ho informed the team that Guang Chiu's gang killed a police officer and asked the police to release their leader and deport him back to China. After Jai Haik heard that, he asked his superiors to allow him to interrogate Guang Chiu so that he could solve this case. Pil Ho and Dong Qian thought that it was a bad idea, but Jin Suk allowed him to do that. After that, Jai Huck went to the interrogation room. Before he interrogated Guang Chiu, he beat him up first. Then he tore up Guang Chiu's shirt. Turned out, Guang Chiu had many tattoos on his body. Each tattoo on his body was a symbol of each stage in his life, such as when he was only a petty criminal, a criminal who kept going in and out of the prison, and when he killed his own father for sexually abusing him. While Jai Huck was observing those tattoos, Guang Chiu suddenly attacked him, but fortunately, Jai Huck managed to attack him back. In another place, after Guang Chiu's gang killed a police officer, they cut off his hand and sent it to the police station. Jai Huck was angry when he saw that package, especially after the evidence showed that Guang Chiu's gang was the one that killed the poor police officer and his co-worker Dong Huan. Jai Huck then returned to the interrogation room and tortured Guang Chiu again. After that, Jek Huck interrogated a man named Mosul, who claimed that he was only Guang Chiu's guide. While Mosul was having his dinner, Jek Huck gave his phone number to him. He told him to call him if he remembered something important regarding of Guang Chiu and the package he delivered. At 30 past 11 in the night, many men came to the police station to turn themselves in. Those men admitted that they had been living in South Korea illegally. On his way home, Jihak received a call from Ji Yi. Ji Yi told him that her co-worker had restored the Guang Chiu's phone data and found a picture of him at the airport in that phone. At 12 in the midnight, the men who turned themselves into the police suddenly attacked the police officers at the police station. In the car, Jihak realized that something went wrong. He then changed his direction and returned to the police station. Turned out, the men who attacked the police station was the members of Huayin Gang. They attacked that place to free their leader, Guang Chiu. After a while, they finally managed to defeat the police officers and free Guang Chiu. Surprisingly, Mosul, the man who claimed that he was only Guang Chiu's guide, turned out to be the leader of Huayin Gang. Once he met Guang Chiu, he killed him with a knife because Guang Chiu had opened his mouth to the police. While Jai Hyuk was heading to the police station, he saw Mosul leaving with his car. He changed his direction and chased Mosul right away. He approached Mosul's car and tried to stop him by hitting his car. But unfortunately, he failed to stop him. Mosul and his subordinate managed to run away from him. Jai Hyuk finally returned to the police station and saw Guang Chiu's dead body there. From the CCTV footage, he found out that his informant, Chun Gil, was a member of Huang Gang. After that, the NIS executives had a meeting. In that meeting, they discussed about Huang Gang's attack at the police station. Dong Qian assumed that the leader of Huang Gang was a man named Wang Mosul. Jin Suk was mad because Dong Qian wasn't sure about the information that he found. They also didn't find any important information from Guang Chiu when they interrogated him. After Jai Kek received treatment at the hospital, he planned to see Chun Gil because he believed that Chun Gil could help him to recover his memory. But before he saw Chun Gil, he came to meet his superiors and told them that he would take a break from work for a week to recover himself. Pil Ho was surprised when he heard that, but Jin Suk allowed him to do that. Before leaving, Jake Huck left his gun and access card on the table. Jin Suk and Pil Ho believed that Ji Huck wouldn't give up with this case.
After that, Jae-huk met with Ji-yi and asked her to help him to find a 70-year-old trader from North Korea who was once working for a woman named Kim seong se He asked her to find out if that trader knew seong sees nephew, Chun gil Ji-yi then came to the hospital and talked to seong se She pretended to be Chun gils friend and got her to talk about Chun gil by saying that Chun gil was missing the food she made. Seong se admitted that Chun gil had contacted her. Meanwhile, Jae-huk met with Lin Wei, a beautiful agent from Chinese intelligence agency. Jae-huk asked Lin Wei about what Mo Sul was doing in South Korea. Lin Wei said that Mo Sul got involved in a big conspiracy that involved opposition party. She revealed that Hawaiian gang supplied dangerous drugs to top politicians' children who revolted against the government. She said that a man named Beck Mosa was the person behind this conspiracy. Mosa controlled information, drugs, and illegal weapons from underground near China border. Lin Wei warned Ji Hyuk that Mosa was a dangerous criminal. After that, Ji Hyuk met with Ji Yi. Ji Yi told him that she had traced the call that Chun Gil made. Then, Ji Hyuk came to an abandoned warehouse and waited Huang Gang there. He and those gangsters got into a fight. Chun Gil was trying to run away from him, but Ji Yi managed to stop him. When Zhang Hak interrogated Chun Gil, Chun Gil said that he had told him that Mo Sul would come to China, but Ji Hak couldn't remember that. Chun Gil then told Ji Hak to leave soon because his gang was on their way to that place. He also said that there was a traitor in the NIS who revealed about that location to his gang. He gave a phone to Ji Hak and warned him not to trust anyone. He added that his gang was supplying drug to South Korea to create some chaos. Since Huang Gang was now after Chun Gil, Chun Gil decided to run away. After Chun Gil left, Jae Hyuk checked the package that he left and found many delivery receipts inside. In his office, Dong Kyun received the investigation report of Huang Chiu's phone that contained a picture of Jae Hyuk at the airport. He saw the page that contained that picture and tore it up. Then he showed that investigation report to Pilho. Since the page that contained Jae Hyuk's picture had been teared up, Pilho had no idea that there was Jae Hyuk's picture in Guang Chiu's phone. But Pilho felt suspicious and asked the team to send him the copy of the investigation report. To anticipate the drug supply that was sent by Huang Gang that would arrive in South Korea soon, Jae Hyuk asked Jae Yi to investigate the delivery receipts that were left by Chun Gil. Then, Jae Hyuk met Pilho and showed the delivery receipts to him. He asked Pilho to give him two more days to solve that case. In the evening, Jae Hyuk received a call from Jae Yi. Jae Yi informed him that the delivery receipts were from a container that arrived at a terminal in Incheon three hours ago. After Jae Hyuk heard that, he went to the terminal and looked for the container. While he was searching that place, Ji Yi suddenly told him that some cars were approaching that place. Ji Hyuk finally found the container that he was looking for. When he opened that container, he found an old man inside. That old man had many tattoos on his body. When Ji Hyuk got out of that container, he saw Huayan gangsters holding Chun Gil captive there. Those gangsters told Ji Hyuk to put down his weapon. Mo Sewell then attacked him and took him to their headquarters. In that hotel room, Mo Sewell revealed that the person whom Jai Hyuk killed in China was his own son. Mo Sewell was angry at Ji Hyuk because of that. He then tortured Ji Hyuk by electrocuting his mouth until he fell unconscious. Before Ji Hyuk went to the terminal, he told Ji Yi that he had installed tracking devices in his shoes and his belt because he was afraid if something bad happened to him. Unfortunately, Mo Sewell managed to find those tracking devices. Turned out, there was a drug laboratory in that place. Mo Sewell also had his own drug cooks whom he recruited from North Korea. Those drug cooks had tattoos that contained the drug receipts on their bodies. Apparently, before Ji Hyuk went to the terminal, he had also swallowed a tracking device so that Mo Sewell and his gang wouldn't find it. Ji Hyuk asked Mo Sewell if Mo Se was the person behind all this problem. Mo Sewell was mad when he heard his question and beat him up again. In the bathroom, Jae Hyuk spitted out the tracking device that he had swallowed to tell Jae Yi to send a help soon. Then he began to attack and kill Mo Sewell's subordinates in that place. 
Unfortunately, he failed to kill Mosul and his right-hand man because they had fled from that place. Not long after that, Ji Yi arrived in that place and managed to save Ji Hyuk, who almost got killed by Mosul's subordinate. After that, Ji Hyuk tried to save Chun Gil, but unfortunately, he failed to do that. While Mosul was leaving the hotel building, he saw a man entering the elevator. The next day, Ji Hyuk went to Jin Suk's room to get his gun and access card back. He didn't tell Jin Suk about what happened to him. After he left that room, Jin Suk deleted the CCTV footages of Ji Hyuk attacking Mosul's subordinates at the hotel. After that, Soon Yan came to see Ji Hyuk. She warned him not to get Ji Yi involved too deeply in this case. Apparently, Ji Yi had been investigating her father's case secretly. At the park, Ji Hyuk met with his co-worker, Myung Ki. Ji Hyuk asked Myung Ki to help him to search the NIS database and find the NIS agent who received the information when he asked for help in China. In another place, Ji Yi was remembering an NIS commander named Choi Il Lak, who committed suicide last year. Since Il Lak died, Ji Yi had been financially helping Il Lak's son, Sang Kyun. When Ji Yi and Sang Kyun had a lunch at a restaurant, Sang Kyun told Ji Yi that he didn't believe that his father committed suicide. He said that he would investigate the death of his father by himself. Myung Ki went to the server room to search the NIS database and find the information that Ji Hyuk asked him. At the same time, Sang Kyun was hacking the NIS server. Because of that, Myung Ki failed to complete his download. Suddenly, the alarm in that place went off. The NIS agents found out that their system had been hacked. They traced the cyber attack and found out that it came from a laptop that belonged to an NIS agent named Choi Il Lak. Il Lak was responsible for creating a security program for the NIS. The NIS agents were confused when they found out about that because Il Lak had passed away. Jihak was also confused when he heard about that. After that, Jin Suk called Dong Kyun to her room. She asked him if he knew anything about the hacking since Il Lak was working with him before he died. The NIS director Yan Ta and the NIS deputy director In Huan were also worried if they were getting dragged into this case. They planned to order an NIS agent to take care about this case. Since Ji Hyuk had memory problem, he didn't remember that Il Lak had passed away because he committed suicide last year. He only remembered that he and Il Lak were once working together to solve a case. When Jai Hyuk and Jai Yi went to Il Lak's house, they saw many computers there. They also found a business card of a journalist in that place. They assumed that the hacker planned to see that journalist. In another place, Sang Kyun was meeting with a man. But when he had just arrived there, he realized that there were many agents who were watching him. Because of that, he finally decided to leave that place. Those agents chased him immediately. While Sang Kyun was getting cornered, Jae Hyuk suddenly showed up and helped him. Jae Hyuk managed to defeat those agents and took Sang Kyun with him. But instead of thanking him, Sang Kyun called Ji Hyuk a liar because he didn't protect his father. Jae Hyuk was surprised when he heard that. He tried to remember about what happened between him and Sang Kyun's father, but he had a headache instead. Sang Kyun used that moment to run away. In the car, Su Nian berated Ji Hyuk for sabotaging her operation to capture Sang Kyun. Four years ago in Syria, Ji Hyuk was confronting Dong Kyun after he found the evidence that Dong Kyun had embezzled the NIS funds. But Ji Hyuk finally decided not to report him. Back to the present time, Su Nian ordered her subordinate to hack Ji Yi's phone. In another place, Ji Yi used a game application to contact Sang Kyun. She told him to respond to her message. Not long after that, Sang Kyun replied her message. Su Yan found out that Ji Yi had been contacting Sang Kyun. When Su Yan asked Ji Yi about it, Ji Yi told Su Yan that Sang Kyun only wanted to talk to Ji Kyuk. At the train station, Sang Kyun hacked the security camera to signal Ji Kyuk to meet him in the train. While Ji Kyuk was heading to the train, Su Yan's subordinates chased him right away but Jae Hyuk finally managed to run away from them. In the train, Sang Kyun told Ji Hyuk that he saw a video of his father talking to Ji Hyuk through a video call. 
When Sang Kyun got out of the train, Soon Yin's subordinates suddenly came to that place and captured him. They took him to the NIS headquarters and seized Iolak's laptop that he had been using to hack the NIS system. After that, In Huan's team took him to the interrogation room and interrogated him there. When it was almost 8 o'clock, the NIS agents turned on Il Lak's laptop. Suddenly, there was another cyber attack. That cyber attack threatened to delete all data in the NIS database right at 8 o'clock. In the interrogation room, Sang Kyun was angry because the NIS had killed his father. He said that he would cancel the cyber attack if Ji Huk talked to him. Since they didn't have another option, In Huan finally decided to allow Sang Kyun to talk to Ji Hyuk in another room that was free from any listening device nor security camera. In that room, Ji Hyuk told Sang Kyun about what happened in Syria. Because of the embezzlement that was committed by Dong Kyun, Ji Hyuk and his team failed to do their mission. Back then, while Ji Hyuk and Dong Kyun were getting into a fight, Sang Kyun's father, Il Lak, broke up their fight. Suddenly, a young man came to that place. He offered himself to help them to install the listening device in their target's computer. But unfortunately, that young man failed to do that. When Jai Hyuk and his team checked on him, they saw that that young man lying dead in a room with blood all over his body. Il Lak was angry when he saw that. It reminded him of his son, Sang Kyun, because they were at the same age. Because of that, he decided to attack their enemies. He got injured in the leg because of that attack. Back to the present time, after Jai Huk finished telling his story about what happened to Sang Kyun's father in Syria, he promised Sang Kyun that he would find the traitors who had betrayed and gotten ill lack and some NIS agents killed. After that, Sang Kyun kept his promise to cancel the Sember attack that attacked the NIS system. Turned out, Soon Yin had installed a listening device in the room that was used by Sang Kyun and Jae Kyuk to have a conversation earlier. Jae Yi then gave a phone to Sang Kyun so that he could use it to call Jae Kyuk. Jae Hyuk found out that the person whom Sang Kyun's father contacted in an emergency was Su Yin. He came to Su Yin's room and forced her to tell him about the person who had ordered her to trap Chun Gil. But Su Yin refused to answer him. Because of that, Jae Huk finally decided to shoot her. When Jae Huk woke up, he found himself lying in his psychiatrist's room. Turned out, he didn't kill Su Yen. But Su Yen got injured in her neck because of that attack. After that, Jae Huk came to see Pil Ho. Pil Ho gave him a warning because of what he did to Su Yen. He even threatened to create a disciplinary committee to examine him. But Jae Huk wasn't afraid of his threat. He said that he began to find the answer that he was looking for. Later, Jae Hyuk ran into Su Yen. Surprisingly, Su Yen wasn't mad at him. She was worried about him instead. In another place, In Huan's subordinate forced a woman to sign a confession letter that stated that her cousin, who was working as a reporter, was a spy. Jae Hyuk received a secret document about Su Yen from his friend. In that document, Jae Huk saw a note from Su Yin's psychiatrist that stated that Su Yin was a high-risk person. After that, Jae Huk went to Su Yin's house to look for some clues. He found some medicines that had been consumed by Su Yin and a picture of Su Yin in that place. Suddenly, Su Yin returned home. Jae Huk almost got caught by her. After Su Yin left, Jae Huk noticed that there was a date behind the picture that he found. That picture was taken long before Kyung Siak joined the NIS. Ji Hyuk wondered about the person who took that picture. Ji Yi went to the house of Jung Yun Hee, the reporter Jung Ki Sun's cousin, who was forced by In Huan's subordinate to sign the confession letter. When she went inside that house, she was shocked to see Yun Hee lying dead on the floor. It appeared that Yun Hee committed suicide by injecting too much drug into her body. When Jae Yang returned to the office, Yang Ta berated her for visiting Yan He's house without any warrant, but Su Yan defended her. After that, Ji Yi continued to investigate the case and found information about an NIS black agent named Chang Chun Wu. At the pub, Pil Ho met with a man. That man gave a package to him. Ji Yi told Ji Hyuk about the information that she found. She revealed that Chun Wu was an NIS agent who had infiltrated some gangs. 
But one day, those gangs found out that there were NIS agents who infiltrated their gangs. They killed those NIS agents and Chun Wu managed to be the only NIS agent who survived. Ji Hyuk was surprised when he found out about that. He planned to investigate Chun Wu. In his room, Chun Wu took off his shirt. There was a Yakuza tattoo on his back. It appeared that Chun Wu was targeting Ji Hyuk too. Pil Ho gave the package that he received from a man at the pub to Jin Suk. Turned out that package contained an analysis report of Jin Hyuk's physical and psychological problem. It wasn't reveled yet about why Pil Ho gave that analysis report to Jin Suk. While Ji Yi was heading to parking space, she accidentally saw Ji Hyuk and Su Yan getting into an argument. She noticed that Su Yan was crying there. Later, Ji Yi received a fax from the Ministry of Public Security in China. In that document, the Ministry of Public Security in China stated that they had never released any official document about the reporter Ki Sun's journey in North Korea. Ji Yi told Su Yan about that document and Su Yan took it. Su Yan also looked surprised when Ji Yi mentioned Chun Wu's name. Ji Yi noticed that and called Ji Huk afterward. She told him that there was something between Su Yan and Chun Wu. At the coffee shop, while Ji Hyuk was waiting for Ji Yi, he suddenly realized that Ji Yi was in danger. He went to the parking space and saw Ji Yi's car door open. He realized that Ji Yi had been kidnapped. He quickly went inside his car and tried to find Ji Yi. Suddenly, he received a call from Ji Yi's number. Turned out, Chun Wu was the one who used Ji Yi's phone to call him. Ji Hyuk finally spotted Ji Yi's kidnapper's car and chased him right away. After a while, he finally managed to stop him. But turned out, the person who drove that car was not Chun Wu. Ji Hyuk also didn't find Ji Yi there. But after he searched that car, he finally found Ji Yi inside the car trunk. Suddenly, Ji Hyuk received another call from Chun Wu. Apparently, Chun Wu was inside a car that was parked not far from that place. After Chun Wu threatened Ji Hyuk, he finally left that place. Ji Hyuk chased him, but he failed to catch him. After that, Ji Hyuk took Ji Yi to the hospital. Fortunately, Ji Yi only suffered from small injury. Then, Ji Hyuk came to see Su Yan. Su Yan asked him to have a conversation while walking. Su Yan admitted that she couldn't reject a request from someone because she owed him a favor. Ji Hyuk asked her about who that person was. But before Su Yan had the chance to say his name, someone suddenly shot her. Ji Hyuk was surprised when he saw that. He took Su Yan to the hospital right away. At the hospital, Su Yan was receiving intensive treatment because she was in critical condition. Meanwhile, Ji Hyuk was being interrogated by the police because the CCTV footage showed that he was the one who shot Su Yan. Ji Hyuk was surprised when he watched that CCTV footage. He couldn't believe that he had shot Su Yan. In his cell, he tried to remember about what he had done to Su Yan, but he didn't remember anything. In the evening, Pilho visited Su Yan at the hospital. It seemed that there was something between him and Su Yan. Pil Ho then came to see the NIS director Young Chan in his room. He asked Young Chan to choose him to take care of this case and cover it up. He also said that Jin Suk ignored the fact that Jae Kuk had a psychological problem. Pil Ho and Jin Suk got into an argument and accused each other of having ulterior motive. But Young Chan finally decided to choose In Huan and Pil Ho to take care of this case. After that, Pil Ho went to the police station and released Ji Hyuk from that place. Ji Hyuk found it strange that Pil Ho didn't ask him if he really shot Su Yan. He felt suspicious of him because of that. In the car, while Pil Ho's subordinates were taking Ji Hyuk to some place, Ji Hyuk suddenly attacked them. He managed to defeat them and confronted Pil Ho. He gave his gun to Pil Ho and then left that place. While he was walking away, Pil Ho suddenly shot himself in the shoulder. He did that so that people would think that Ji Hyuk was the one who did it. The wounded Ji Hyuk went inside Ji Yi's car and asked Ji Yi to help him. Later, he woke up from his faint and found himself lying in Ji Yi's house. Not long after that, Ji Yi returned home. Ji Hyuk suddenly attacked her and asked her about the pictures and documents that she had in her room. Ji Yi admitted that she was investigating her father's case. 
Turned out, her father was an NIS agent who went missing when she graduated from high school. Just like Jae Kyuk, Ji Yi's father also went missing when he was doing a mission in China. Ji Yi said that it was the main reason why she decided to join the NIS. She also said that she didn't believe that Jae Hyuk was the one who shot Su Dian. Jae Hyuk revealed that he thought that he saw someone when Su Dian was getting shot. After Jae Hyuk recovered, he visited the location where Su Yin was getting shot. He tried to remember about what really happened that day. Ji Yi helped him to check the security cameras in that area. In a CCTV footage, Jae Hyuk saw a man with a black cap. It was the man whom he saw when Su Yin was getting shot. When Jae Yi returned to her office, she found a small note on her desk. That small note revealed about an NIS project called Deep Fake. It was a project where someone could replace someone's face or voice with that of someone else in a video. Ji Yi was surprised when she found out about that. She assumed that someone was trying to trap Ji Kyuk by using that technology. In another place, Chun Wu was holding a Huyang gangster captive. Ji Hyuk followed the man with the black cap that he saw in the CCT footage. He found out that that man was a former Special Forces soldier who deserted from North Korea. Jihak managed to catch and attack him. But unfortunately, before he had the chance to find information from him, that man took his own life by taking cyanide. Jihak took his phone and found a picture of the reporter Ki Sun there. Jihak believed that Ki Sun was the next target who was going to be killed by Chun Wu because she had important information about the murders of NIS agents. Jihak then planned to meet Bak Jong Su an IT expert who created the deep fake program. When Jai Haik interrogated Jong Su, Jong Su admitted that a man named Kim Han, Su was the one who offered him the job. He said that he needed to find the original video to check if a video of someone was real or not. He told Ji Yi that he had a plan to use Jong Su. After that, he called Pil Ho and asked him to meet Ki Sun in a location in the evening. Right now, the NIS was holding Ki Sun captive because they accused her of being North Korean spy. Pil Ho then gathered his team and ordered them to trap Ji Kyuk. He also ordered Ji Yi to go to the control room and watch how they would arrest Ji Kyuk. In the meeting place, Ji Kyuk attacked an NIS agent who was watching that place and stole his phone. The NIS had sent their agents and snipers to that place to capture Ji Kyuk. They spotted a person whom they thought was Ji Kyuk in the CCTV footage and targeted him right away. Pil Ho was surprised when that person opened her hood because that person turned out to be Su Yan and not Ji Kyuk. But turned out, Ji Kyuk had asked Zhang Su to replace his face with Su Dian's face so that the NIS would think that he was Su Yan and not himself. Just like what he expected, Pil Ho failed to stay focused. Pil Ho ordered the snipers not to shoot Ji Hyuk, who disguised himself as Su Yin. Because of that, Ji Hyuk managed to approach Ki Sun safely. He used that moment to take Ki Sun with him. The NIS agents chased him right away, but Ji Hyuk managed to defeat them and run away with Ki Sun. After that, Ki Sun and Ji Hyuk had a conversation. Ki Sun told him that the NIS was secretly investigating the government officials and the soldiers who deserted from North Korea. She revealed that the criminal organization in North Korea named Sangwoo was the one who gave her the list of the NIS agents who got murdered. She said that she received this information from her informant, but her informant suddenly disappeared. Turned out her informant was the one who was being held captive by Chun Wu. Suddenly, Jae Hyuk received a message from Jae Yi. Jae Yi sent him a picture of Chun Wu having a meeting with two men. Then, Jae Hyuk contacted Chun Wu and asked him to meet him. Turned out, Chun Wu was the one who killed Ki Sun's cousin. Jae Hyuk showed Chun Wu the picture of him having a meeting with two men that Jae Yi sent to him earlier. He threatened that he would send that picture to the media. That picture was the evidence that Chun Wu was working with the criminal organization Samuho and betraying the NIS. Jae Hyuk asked him to give him the original video of Su Yen getting shot and asked him to tell him about one of the men who attended that meeting. He asked if that man was Baek Mosa and Chun Wu said that that man used to be an NIS agent. Chun Wu finally gave the original video of Su Yen getting shot to Jae Hyuk and Jae Hyuk sent it to Jae Yi right away. 
But surprisingly, Ji Yi deleted that video, even though that video was very important for Ji Kyuk. In the evening, Ji Hyuk went to the hospital after Ji Yi told him that Su Yan had woken up from her faint. But while he was there, Pil Ho suddenly came to that place and surrounded him. Pil Ho told him that Su Yan had passed away a few hours ago. Ji Hyuk was finally being imprisoned again. During his days in the cell, he kept training himself and trying to solve the case. Meanwhile, Mosa and his gang managed to find and capture Chun Wu. They finally decided to execute him. One day, someone released the original CCTV footage of Su Yan getting shot. Because of that evidence, Ji Hyuk was finally being released from the prison. When Ji Yi returned home, she was surprised to see Ji Hyuk waiting for her there. Ji Yi told Ji Hyuk that Pil Ho once said to her that her father might be still alive and get trapped in North Korea. But Pil Ho believed that Ji Yi's father already returned to South Korea after he changed his face in cosmetic surgery. For that reason, it was hard for the NIS to identify him. After Ji Hyuk heard that story, he told Ji Yi that he understood. He wasn't mad at her even though she had betrayed him. Ji Hyuk then told Ji Yi that he had returned to work, and Jin Suk ordered him to investigate Chun Wu's murder case. It was revealed that a man who was having a meeting with Chun Wu another day was named Dong Chol. Dong Chol was the deputy general manager of North Korea's security agency. But Jin Hyuk admitted that he still couldn't find any information about another man who attended that meeting. He suspected that that man was the leader of Samung Ho. After that, Jacob came to see Kim Han Su, the man who ordered it expert Jong Su to create the deep fake program. Jacob suspected that Han Su was a part of Samung Ho. Before leaving, Jacob took Han Su's PDA because he believed that Han Su used that device to communicate with his organization. In her office, Ji Yi told Ji Hyuk that Chun Wu and Samung Ho were creating drug called ZIP together. That drug was used to cure a person who suffered from PTSD. Suddenly, there was a message in Han Su's PDA. Ji Hyuk realized that that message was sent by someone nearby. After that, Ji Hyuk and Ji Yi went to the mortuary to see Chun Wu's dead body. Ji Yi examined Chun Wu's back by using ultraviolet light and found out that there were many dots there. Turned out, those dots were a QR code. From that QR code, Ji Yi and Ji Hyuk found information about Chun Pyeong Il, one of CIA founders who retired in the 1970s and was being hospitalized now due to his illness. They wondered if Pyeong Il was the leader of Samung Ho. After that, Ji Hyuk and Ji Yi went to a hospital and asked about Pyeong Il. But the worker there told them that Pyeong Il had returned home. According to the blueprint of the hospital, there was a secret place in that hospital that could be accessed by the freight elevator. Ji Hyuk went to see his psychiatrist Yu Jin and asked her to tell him where she got CIP. From the CCTV footage in the elevator, Ji Yi saw a doctor pressing B2 and B3 buttons at the same time. Then, Ji Yi went to the restroom and knocked a doctor out. She stole that doctor's coat and disguised herself as a doctor there. Ji Hyuk found out that Dong Kyun was the one who informed Yu Jin about ZIP. He also found out that Dong Kyun was the one who secretly went to China after he asked for help last year. When Dong Kyun arrived in China, he saw Ji Hyuk looking very miserable. He then sent the ship to take Ji Hyuk to South Korea. Dong Kyun also revealed that he was the one who left the flash drive that contained Ji Hyuk's video in the locker and the note that contained information about deep fake program on Ji Yi's laptop. In the elevator, Ji Yi pressed B2 and B3 buttons at the same time and found the secret room in that hospital. She also managed to find Pyong Il's room. In that room, she saw Pyong Il lying unconscious on the bed. There were bottles of dangerous drugs around him. While Ji Yi was taking Pyong Il with her, the security guards suddenly stopped her and offered themselves to take Pyong Il to the ambulance. But turned out, Mosa and his subordinates had been waiting in that ambulance. They took Pyong Il with them. Ji Yi and Ji Hyuk then chased them right away. After a while, they finally found the ambulance. While Ji Hyuk was approaching that ambulance, Mosa suddenly killed Pyong Il and threw a grenade at him. Fortunately, Ji Hyuk and Ji Yi managed to survive that explosion. 
Ji Yi looked surprised when she saw Mo Sa. Suddenly, Mo Sa shot her in the shoulder. When Jae Hak woke up from his faint, he checked Jen Yi right away. Fortunately, Ji Yi was still alive because she was wearing bulletproof vest. Ji Yi said that she heard that Mo Sa was her own father who suffered from amnesia. Mo Sa was known as a criminal who controlled the China border. Ji Hak concluded that Mo Sa was not the leader of Sangwoo because Mo Sa used Pyong Il to trap them. He wondered about Mo Sa's relationship with Sangwoo. In another place, In Huan used the network that he had to urge the NIS director Young Chan to fire Jin Suk from her position and replace it with Pil Ho. In Huan also wanted Jae Kuk to work for him. Yang Ta was mad when he heard that. He felt unappreciated by In Huan, despite what he had done for him all this time. Jae Kuk came to see his Chinese agent friend Lin Wei and asked her about Dong Chol. Lin Wai told him that Dong Chol's son was a drug addict who used the dangerous drug Zidepi. She revealed that Sang Muho blackmailed Dong Chol with that information. In the NIS headquarters, Ji Kyuk and his team found information about a technology company named Planet that was owned by Shin Su Yang. Ji Hyuk and Ji Yi then came to see Su Yang. Ji Hyuk realized that Su Yang had been watching them on the order of someone. When Jang Hak gave a picture to Pil Ho, it was revealed that Pil Ho was in relationship with Su Yan. Turned out, Ji Yi realized that Mo Sa was her own father after she saw his left hand. Ji Hyuk and Ji Yi concluded that Sang Ho used the personal information that Planet had gained to change the voting behavior to support a candidate selection. After that, Ji Hyuk came to see Lin Wei. Ji Kuk was surprised when Lin Wei informed him that Dong Chol died last year when he stayed at a hotel. It was revealed that there was an NIS agent whom Dong Chol contacted before he died. In the car, In Huan told Ji Yi that her father wasn't missing, but was sold by someone to North Korea. Ji Yi was surprised when she heard that. In Huan revealed that the NIS received important information about high explosion from that transaction. He then gave the operation code to Ji Yi and suggested her to investigate the case by herself. When Ji Yi investigated that code, she found out that Jin Suk was the one who gave the order. In the parking space, a car was trying to hit Ji Hyuk, but Ji Hyuk managed to avoid and stop it. When he checked that car, he found Pil Ho inside. Turned out, Pil Ho had been trapped by someone. Ji Hyuk took Pil Ho to the hospital soon. Meanwhile, Ji Yi was going to meet with Jin Suk. She took her gun with her before she got out of the car. Ji Hyuk played and watched the video of him again. In that video, he found out that the person who killed Dong Chol was a man named Kim Dong Wook. In the car, Mo Sa watched Ji Yi aiming her gun at Jin Suk. In the NIS headquarters, the NIS director Young Chan and the NIS deputy director In Huan got into an argument. Young Chan showed them the evidence of the use of the NIS funds, but In Huan managed to tackle down his argument. Because of that, two NIS advisors who initially supported Young Chan decided to support In Huan. Ji Hyuk met with Ji Yi at the rooftop. Ji Hyuk asked Ji Yi why she thought that it was Jin Suk who had trapped and betrayed her father, but Ji Yi refused to answer him. Instead, she threw her phone away because she believed that Ji Hyuk had hacked it. Ji Yi then said that she wouldn't work with Ji Hyuk anymore. She didn't care that they became enemies now. Turned out, In Huan was the one who had hacked Ji Yi's phone. After Ji Yi stopped working with Ji Hyuk, she began to work for In Huan. In Huan took Ji Yi to the information center that was connected to Planet. In that room, In Huan and his team collected and monitored any information from all network around the world. That day, Ji Yi would start working in the information center but she would be supervised by In Huan's subordinate. She was tasked to watch a CCTV footage in Jin Suk's house's area. In another place, Jae Hyuk asked Dong Kyun to watch Pil Ho's room at the hospital. He was worried if there were people who wanted to harm him. Jae Hyuk also said that he planned to investigate Dong Wook's former partner who had killed Dong Chol, a North Korean government official who died in China. He wanted to know about who gave that man order to kill Dong Chol. The next day, Ji Hyuk came to see a widow of his friend, an NIS agent who had been betrayed and murdered. He wanted to find some information, but he still couldn't conclude if Jin Suk 
was the one who gave the order or not. After that, Jake Heck talked to Yang Tai, the person who informed Pilho that Planet had leaked personal information. Yang Ta admitted that he did that so that he could get rid of In Huan. Jehak told him that he knew that In Huan was the leader of Sang Ho. He said that he would help Yang Ta to destroy In Huan if he gave him the evidence, but Yang Ta refused to do that because he was afraid. In the information center, In Huan's team was watching Jin Suk, who was going to meet someone. Turned out, the person whom Jin Suk was meeting with was Mo Sa. Ji Yi was worried when she saw that. She was afraid if Mosa was really her father. In another place, a sniper was preparing his firearm. At the same time, Ji Kuk was heading to a meeting place. Ji Yi contacted Ji Kuk secretly and told him to stop the sniper in a car in that area. While Ji Kuk was looking for that sniper, he realized that there was another sniper who was aiming his firearm at Jin Suk. Ji Kuk finally decided to take care of the sniper in the car first. Mosa was surprised when he saw that. And suddenly, a big explosion happened near them. Mosa managed to survive that explosion and thought of murdering Jin Suk to take revenge on her. But suddenly, Jae Hyuk came to that place and stopped him. Mosa told Jae Hyuk that he knew him very well because they had a lot in common. After saying that, he left that place with a boat. In his room, In Huan looked very upset and disappointed because he failed to kill Mosa and Ji Kuk. Apparently, Ji Yi and Ji Kuk were only pretending to have a fight and become enemies. Fortunately, Jin Sok managed to survive the big explosion. Ji Kuk asked her if she was the one who planned to murder Mosa. Jin Sok answered that she didn't create that plan. She said that all she knew that In Huan and Mosa were getting involved in a big project together. To find out about the truth, she sent Dong Wook to investigate them, not to kill Dong Chol. She thought that Dong Chol refused to work with In Huan, even though In Huan threatened him. Instead, she believed that Dong Chol threatened In Huan back by saying that he would expose him, and that was why In Huan decided to kill him. Meanwhile, Yang Ta was being kidnapped by some people, but he managed to run away from them. Turned out, Dong Kyun was the one who ordered those people to capture him. It was because when he checked Pil Ho's dashboard camera, it was revealed that Yang Ta was the last person whom Pil Ho saw. After that, Yang Ta came to see Ji Kyuk and asked him for help. Dong Kyun and Ji Kyuk were glad because their strategy finally worked. In the car, Yang Ta informed Ji Kuk that In Huan planned to use Planet to sabotage the election. He also revealed that In Huan was the one who sent Mosa abroad when Mosa was still working as an NIS agent. In Huan threatened to expose the owner of Planet if he refused to do what he asked him. In his working room, Su Yang, the owner of Planet, worked by himself. Meanwhile, Ji Kuk was meeting with a professor who created a program for Planet. That professor said that they needed to access the computer that only could be accessed by Su Yang to find the evidence of the crime that was committed by Planet and In Huan. While Jae Hyuk was attacking Su Yang, In Huan suddenly came to that room. After Su Yang left that room, Jae Hyuk and In Huan had a conversation. In Huan accused Jae Hyuk of murdering his co-workers for power and Jae Hyuk didn't deny it. Suddenly, In Huan's subordinates took Jie Yi to that room. In Huan threatened that he would kill Jie Yi if Jie Hyuk didn't stop what he was doing soon. Suddenly, In Huan received a call from Pil Ho. Surprisingly, Pil Ho was attending a meeting with other members of the Intelligence Committee. Pil Ho told In Huan that he would show everyone the video of Jie Hyuk that was taken before Jie Hyuk lost his memory. In that video, Jae Huck said that he was the person who killed his co-workers. Last year, Jae Huck and his co-workers, Dong Wook and Kyung Siuk, were watching the meeting that was attended by Mo Sa, Chun Wu, and Dong Chol. Turned out, Mo Sa realized that he was being watched. Dong Wook and Kyung Siuk began to suspect and blame each other because they knew that there was a traitor in the NIS. Jae Huck also began to suspect them because he had no idea who was the traitor in the NIS. He was busy watching the CCTV footages meanwhile Dong Wook and Kyung Siak were on standby near the hotel where Mo Sa, Chun Wu, and Dong Chol had a meeting. Suddenly, Jae Hyuk realized that something went wrong 
He went to a hotel room and saw Dong Wook standing there with blood all over his hand. There was also a man lying dead on the floor. Dong Wook swore that he didn't kill that man. Suddenly, Jet Hike heard some Chinese soldiers were approaching that place. Ji Huck left that room and took Dong Wook with him. When Zheng Hek returned to the headquarters, he saw Dong Wook and Kyung Siak aiming their guns at each other. Suddenly, Dong Wook shot Kyung Siak to death because he believed that Kyung Siak was a traitor. Ji Huck was surprised when he saw that. He didn't believe that Kyung Siak was a traitor, so he shot Dong Wook to death too. Ji Huck was shocked when he realized that Dong Wook was only trying to kill some assassins who were sent to that place to kill them. Since that accident took place, Ji Huck had been overwhelmed by his guilt. He tried to overcome his guilt by using drugs. He was thinking about committing suicide, but he wanted to find and destroy the traitors in the NIS first. He also began to lose his memory since he consumed those drugs. Back to the present time, Ji Huck was overwhelmed with anger after he watched his video. He attacked In Huan's subordinates and shot them. But the intelligence committee decided that Ji Huck was guilty and arrested him. Meanwhile, In Huan wasn't arrested because there wasn't any evidence that he committed any crime. In his cell, Ji Huck felt very guilty after he found out that he was the one who had killed his co workers. Ji Yi tried to convince him that it was not his fault because he didn't have any option back then. She said that their superiors were the ones who needed to be punished. Pil Ho said that he would quit his job if they released Ji Hyuk from the prison. After that, he came to see Ji Hyuk. Pil Ho asked Ji Hyuk to return to work to destroy In Huan. When Ji Hyuk met with Jin Suk, it was revealed that Kyung Siak was working with Samung Ho. Jin Suk believed that Kyung Siak was the one who killed Dong Chol on the order of In Huan, and that was why Dong Wook killed him afterward. The next day, Ji Hyuk, Ji Yi, Pil Ho, and Dong Kyun had a meeting. In that meeting, they discussed about their plan to destroy In Huan. Ji Yi informed them that Pil Ho's car had been hijacked. There were also some politicians who opposed the bill about the use of personal information that could destroy planet and In Huan, but those politicians were found dead not long time ago. Ji Hyuk and his team believed that In Huan was the one who had them murdered. While they were having a discussion, Yang Ta suddenly arrived in that place. The owner of Planet, Su Yong, also joined them after they'd forced him to work together with them. They asked him to give them the evidence of the corruption that had been committed by In Huan. In that room, they listened to the recording of In Huan verbally harassing Su Yong. Yang Ta was the one who took that recording. Because of that recording, In Huan was finally getting arrested. When Jai Hak visited In Huan in the prison, In Huan told him that Mosa was the one who had killed Dong Chol. In Huan revealed that Mosa did it because he held a grudge against Dong Chol for kidnapping and torturing him until he almost died 10 years ago. Despite that story was true, Jai Hak didn't think that In Huan deserved to be forgiven. Not long after that, a man named Kim Jin Young went to the prison. Ji Yi was confused when she found out about it because she believed that Jin Young had fled abroad. Turned out, it was not Jin Young who visited In Huan in the prison, but Mo Sa. Mo Sa came to that place to kill In Huan. It was revealed that the NIS director Young Chan and some politicians were the ones who allowed Mo Sa to take care of In Huan. Ji Haik suspected that something went wrong, so he returned to In Huan's cell to check on In Huan. When he arrived there, he was surprised to see In Huan hanging from the ceiling. He quickly saved him and performed CPR on him. Fortunately, In Huan managed to survive. In Huan told Ji Huk that Mo Se was the one who tried to kill him. The next day, Ji Huk went to a prison to talk to a Chinese gang leader. He asked him about Mosa's real motive to visit South Korea. That Chinese gang leader admitted that he only knew that Mosa was running a business about human trafficking, drugs, and weapons. In another place, Pil Ho and Dong Kyun realized that their superior Young Chan was the person responsible for what happened to In Huan. Jin Suk told Ji Chuk that her superior had ordered her to form a task force to capture Mosa. So, she asked Ji Chuk to help her. After that, Jae Hyuk met with Ji Yi. 
Ji Yi said that she didn't care if Mo Sao was her father because he had turned into a very dangerous criminal right now. Ji Hyuk and Ji Yi then met with Sang Kyun and asked him about a malicious code. Sang Kyun admitted that he didn't know anything about it, but he remembered that a stranger once sent him a message. In that message, that stranger asked him to attack the NIS with him. But Sang Kyun said that he didn't know about his true identity. Jehyuk and Jae Yi suspected that Sang Kyun was hiding something from them. They thought that Mosa had talked to Sang Kyun and was using him right now. To find out about what happened, Jehyuk and Jae Yi decided to follow Sang Kyun. They saw Mosa's subordinates picking Sang Kyun up and taking him to some place. They assumed that they took him to Mosa's headquarters. Jin Suk finally decided to send SWAT team to that place. When Ja Hyuk and SWAT team arrived in that warehouse, they raided that place immediately. But while they were searching that place, an explosion suddenly happened. The fierce gun battle between SWAT team and Mosa's subordinates then happened. Ja Hyuk and SWAT team managed to defeat Mosa's subordinates. Ja Hyuk saw Mosa watching them from the upper floor and headed to that place right away. Sang Kyun got shot during that attack. Ja Hyuk finally managed to find Mosa. But suddenly, Mosa pressed the detonator button. Because of that, a big explosion happened in that place. Ji Yi was shocked and worried when she saw that. She left the van and headed to that place right away. While Mosa was about to kill Ji Hyuk, Ji Yi suddenly came to that place and shot him in the chest. But turned out, Mosa didn't die from that attack. Instead, he managed to run away from that place. Meanwhile, Sang Kyun was being taken to the hospital because he was in a critical condition. Jin Suk and her team were struggling to trace Mosa because Mosa was using EMP bomb that destroyed all the electronic devices in that place. Jin Suk then ordered her team to interrogate Sang Kyun. She didn't care if Sang Kyun was still underage because they needed information from him to capture Mosa. When they checked Sang Kyun's laptop, they saw a map of a cemetery in Seoul. Jin Suk realized that Mose was targeting her because she was asked by her superior to attend a ceremony in that cemetery. Even though Jin Suk knew that it would put her life in danger, she decided to attend that ceremony as a bait so that her team could capture Mose easily. Ji Yi visited Sang Kyun in the hospital. Before leaving, she left her phone there and hoped that Sang Kyun would be willing to work together with her to capture Mosa. After that, she visited In Huan in his room. She saw In Huan lying unconscious on his bed. Ji Hyuk met with a Huayan gangster whom he saw another day. He was the old man who had many tattoos that contained drug receipts on his body. He came to see him to find information about Mosa. Ji Yi told Ji Hyuk that she received important information from the priest who had been taking care of her all this time. That priest admitted that Mosa came to see him to make a confession like how her father used to do. Ji Yi assumed that since Mosa's co-worker died, Mosa had a psychological problem and lost control that he finally turned into a monster. Ji Yi asked Ji Hyuk to kill her father as she failed to make her father return to his old self. After that, Pil Ho and his team had a meeting. In that meeting, they discussed their plan to capture Mosa. They planned to send six snipers to the cemetery that would be visited by Jin Suk. In the CCTV footage, they saw a food truck carrying EMP bomb. They investigated that truck immediately. The security guards were running security checks on all visitors who attended the ceremony in the cemetery. Not long after that, Jin Suk and the NIS director Young Chan arrived in that place. The police and the NIS also used bloodhounds around that area to track Mosa. Meanwhile, Ji Yi was heading to the park where the food truck that carried EMP bomb was last spotted in the CCTV footage. During the ceremony, Jin Suk made a speech as a representative of the families who lost their family members in that attack. Turned out, Mosa wasn't present at the cemetery, but at the rooftop of a building. Ji Yi informed Ji Hyuk that there was someone who disguised himself as a family member of the victim's families and intruded into the ceremony at the cemetery. At the hospital, Sang Kyun went to In Huan's room and attacked In Huan with a knife to take revenge for the death of his father. 
Jihyuk noticed that there was a suspicious man who was taking something from the pocket of his suit. He fired off a shot and attacked him immediately. Ji Yi finally managed to find the food truck in the parking space near a bank. She opened that food truck and found EMP bomb that almost exploded there. But fortunately, that bomb was only a warning from Mosa. Mosa called Ji Hyuk and admitted that he had more important target. Even though the EMP bomb inside the food truck didn't explode, it actually destroyed all electronic devices inside the bank and the area nearby. Jihak then headed to Ji Yi's location. Ji Yi tried to call her team, but she failed to do that because her phone got deactivated. While she was leaving the building, she suddenly saw Mosa leaving with his car. Ji Yi chased him right away and used the driver's phone to call Ji Hyuk. She told Ji Hyuk about Mosa and said that she was heading to the main branch of the bank in Paju, South Korea. After Ji Hyuk heard that, he headed to the same place too. Mosa's subordinates arrived at the main branch of the bank and attacked the security guards there. Not long after that, a truck that carried EMP bomb arrived in that place. The security guards found out that there were intruders in that place and closed all doors there immediately. Jihyuk and Jiyi finally arrived in that place. Since the security guards closed all accesses in that place, they got trapped in the parking space. Turned out, Sang Kyun failed to kill in Huan because Yang Ta suddenly came to that room and stopped him. Suddenly, Mosa sabotaged all network and released the video of himself. In that video, he threatened that he would detonate his EMP bomb that would destroy all data servers of that bank. He also admitted that he was holding 33 bank employees hostage. He said that he didn't want any money, he just wanted to know if the government preferred to save the national economy or their 33 citizens. The NIS director Young Chan ordered Jin Suk to find the EMP bomb first before they found the 33 bank employees who were being held hostage by Mose. Pil Ho asked Sang Kyun to help the NIS to hack the security system of the bank. He disagreed with Young Chan's decision to find the EMP bomb first because he thought that people's lives were more important than anything. At the bank, Jae Huck managed to defeat Mosa's subordinate and find the EMP bomb. But turned out that EMP bomb was only an empty shell. Jae Huck realized that Mosa would still kill his hostages because he knew that the government would choose to save the national economy over their citizens. Mosa wanted the South Koreans to think that their government was bad and lose their trust on the government. Suddenly, Jae Huck lost his mobile phone signal again. He and Ji Yi then used that moment to attack Mosa's subordinates. At the rooftop, Ji Yi sent a signal to the NIS headquarters that the EMP bomb was only an empty shell. But Young Che still urged Jin Suk to find the EMP bomb and ignored the 33 bank employees who were being held hostage. Now, Jin Suk was the one who should make the decision. After thinking for a while, Jin Suk finally decided to order Jae Hyuk and Jae Yi to save the hostages. To find the location of the hostages, Jae Yi played her father's favorite music in every room in that building. She thought that she could find their location by spotting their movement when they reacted to that music. Her strategy finally worked. She managed to find those hostages in Area C. In another place, Mosa had a headache when he heard that music. He suddenly remembered his past with his daughter when she was a child. Meanwhile, Jake Duck was still busy attacking Mosa's subordinates in that place. Mosa began to feel angry and irritated when he heard that music. He destroyed the music player and went berserk. He called Ji Hyuk and asked him to meet him at the rooftop. Since he had a detonator with him, the sniper who was on standby in that area couldn't shoot him right away. Jake Hyuk finally arrived at the rooftop. After he put down his gun, Mosa shot him in the leg. Ji Yi managed to find the hostages and went to the room where the hostages were being held captive. She hoped that her father could reason with her and cancel his wicked plan. Ji Hak saw Mosa having another headache and used that moment to attack him. He stole Mosa's gun and shot Mosa before he had the chance to take the detonator back. Suddenly, Mosa told him that the bomb timer had been set so it would explode automatically. He said that the bomb timer would be stopped if the button of that detonator was pressed. Jehyuk was confused when he heard that. 
He didn't know if he should believe in what Mosa said or not. The sniper in that area was ordered to defeat Ji Kyuk. Suddenly, Je Hyuk pressed the button of the detonator because he believed that Mosa still had humanity within himself, just like what Ji Yi said. Turned out, he made the right decision. The hostages managed to be saved. After that, Ji Yi went to the rooftop and checked on her father. She cried and apologized to her father for what she had done. Then, Je Hyuk released a video of himself. In that video, he informed about some members of Sang Hu who were hiding in the NIS. With the help of the journalists, media, and people who used to work with them, Jae Huck finally managed to reveal about the traitors in the NIS.